Well, hello everyone, and thanks so much for joining this Flex Talks in our series on medical device design and development. Today, Francesco Lortano, he is our software engineering manager out of our Milan design office. We'll talk about creating high reliability firmware for smart medical devices. We will talk for about 20 minutes and then we're happy to answer any questions that you have. So just use the Q&A button at the bottom at any point during Francesco's talk and we'll answer them at the end. We're all ready for you, Francesco. Okay, thank you, Patti. Hello to everybody and welcome to the Creating High Reliability Firmware for Smart Medical Devices. My name is Francesco Lavitano. My background is in electronic engineers and I've been working for Flex since 2007, when my journey on the medical field started. I'm currently leading the software development team, a group of 45 engineers working on firmware embedded programming and mobile medical app development. This is the agenda for today. After a brief introduction about Flex experience on medical devices, we will dig into the firmware reliability area in order to understand how to deal with such topic. After that, we will see something about our team organization and continuous improvement processes since they work side by side with the reliability. So let's start. This is how Flex classify his device portfolio. We have medical equipment, so big devices mainly for hospital application. We have what we call medical devices, where we are mainly interested in personal diagnosis devices and devices used by pharma company to inject or monitor their drug. Since Flex portfolio is so wide, I believe that a visual example could, could help to better understand each other, since our focus today is on firmware and devices. From time to time, I will use the more generic term software, but the software and firmware are the same for this uh, webinar. So, the technology adopted for these devices is generally based on a low power architecture. These are devices that uh, the patient used by, the, by themselves, so handheld devices. Inside we have uh, one or more microcontroller that manage the medical algorithm, the patient user interface like a display or, bu or button, the connectivity like NFC or BLA, and the several sensor that the device has on board. Let's start talking about reliability. It's not our scope today to cover entirely the firm reliability science. It's a very complex and still discussed topic in the academic environment. Hundreds of models have been proposed so far and no common consensus has been achieved. The main purpose here is to understand the key concept, what are the main challenges, and also what are the solutions adopted by the industries. First of all, let's remember that the firmware reliability is part of the overall software quality area, and it is usually considered the most valuable part. It's defined as the probability of a failure-free software for a specified period of time in a specified environment. Since we mentioned the failure, let's see what are the typical failure mechanism. <clears throat> Several study collected and classified the reason for the, the firmware failure. Without spending time in detail, it's important to observe that they are mostly design fault. And this is a strong peculiarity compared to the other discipline. Firmware does not change over time unless intentionally changed or upgraded. Firmware does not rust, age, wear out or deform. Basically, the firmware stays as is unless there are problems in design or in hardware. The hardware failure rate is well described by the bathtub curve. Excluding the first part called infant mortality and the latest part due to the aging, 
it's possible to observe a flat failure rate during the, use, the useful life, the normal life. And this can be measured. <coughs> In firmware, we do not have a similar curve. The theoretical soft reliability curve is uh, generally used to describe the bug expectation during the software life cycle up to the release, to the final release. But the actual behavior cannot be measured for the time being at least. So if the hardware approach is to consider as a failure, physical failure, and the design is assumed correct, the software approach is the opposite since the failure are design fault not detected during the test activity. So we cannot reuse model and experience we uh, developed on the hardware reliability engineering. But even if the uh, firmware reliability cannot be measured or predict accurately, it's proved that can be improved a lot adopting as much as possible engineering best practices and continuous monitoring of their effectiveness. Such, po such point will be uh, our argument in the next slide. In medical, most of the best practices are directly forced by the standard. The 62304 is the main one and describe the software life cycle starting from the customer needs up to the customer satisfaction, covering different area from design and test, risk management, configuration management, and problem resolution. There are additional standard and guidelines that we follow. The FDA provides additional guidelines, and the 62304 points to other industry standards. But for the purpose of this webinar, the 62304 is a perfect fit and we can use as a guideline. Consider that the 62304 does not cover the final validation since it's responsibility of the legal manufacturer, usually our customers. A convenient way to look at the, the software development and verification management chapter is through the V model represented in the picture. It is already an important best practice since it uh, forces you to have a complete and detailed design before the coding. And after the coding, it points to all the test step you have to follow. And we saw as the test is important for reliability. So, Fear, um, having a good design is crucial for reliability. And let's see some trick to avoid common pitfall. The main purpose of the software requirement is to describe the um, complete external behavior of the software. With the architecture design, we move from the problem domain to the solution domain. The main purpose here is to work on software decomposition in smaller module and their abstraction. Such point is really important for test and maintenance. Stepping down into the detailed design, each software item is described in detail in order to um, reduce as much as possible misinterpretation in coding and unit test. Each step has to be validated through a formal review process. The test team is always involved as a reviewer, <clears throat> but also the customer has to validate the, ex the external uh, interface of so the software requirement. On top of that, independent peer reviewer are involved during each step. Test team needs to be involved as soon as possible, not only as reviewer and uh, to challenge the design, but also to kick off their test plan activity and get familiarity with the device they have to test. Finally, the coverage, guarantee the coverage is crucial to guarantee reliability and the traceability with support coverage during the, uh, the different step of the B model. 
as we said, firmware failure are design fault not detected during test activity. That's why we invest a lot on tests in order to improve reliability. Consider that the budget used for uh, development and test is similar. The test team in, compl <coughs> Sorry. in compliance with the FDA guideline has to validate all the software on unknown pedigree and non-product software we use to develop our firmware. We invest a lot on um, auto test automation and continuous testing. So most of the tests run automatically. Anyway, the human observation is an added value. So other tests are manually executed. Then we have some hybrid approach on system performance and stress test, where there is a certain degree of automation, but the human intervention is required. Managed risk is another way to look at the reliability. The firmware has a huge um, impact on the device risk management, since most of the risk control measure coming from the other discipline, uh, from mechanic and electronics, for example, points to the firmware area with additional requirement. Here we will see mainly software risk analysis and cybersecurity, since they are the main deliverables, but many other documents are present and interact with the firmware. It's important that uh, this process start in an early stage of the design, since it has an impact on the architecture, but shall stay active even after the product launch, since data coming from the field could validate or change the design assumption. <coughs> The patient safety is the main objective of the software risk analysis. Software risk analysis establish a process that identify each risk associated to the device use, analyze the impact, and try to reduce it at an acceptable level. The cybersecurity on its end provide a process that guarantee data confidentiality, integrity, and availability in order to protect what is defined as an asset. There are commonality between the two processes. For example, a data violation could represent a patient safety issue. But such combination guarantee a better coverage and also can solve potential conflicts. For example, you can add a password as a security control, but this can add delays to the device access and can create a safety issue in case of emergency. Our software risk analysis process is compliant with the standard mentioned in the in this slide. It's important anyway that we follow two independent approach. A full tree analysis, a top-down approach called full tree analysis, and a bottom-up approach called failure mode and effect analysis, FMEA. The full tree analysis start from the hazardous situation with a continuous step down approach, try to identify each potential contributor that can have a software failure. The FMEA on his end start analyzing each software item and uh, um, analyze the potential impact in case of failure, so reaching the hazardous situation. In both cases, risk control measures are evaluated and uh, eventually added as additional requirement. If you're interested in the cybersecurity, I suggest to follow a dedicated webinar that is always part of this uh, Flex Talk series. The speaker is Nicola Laggia, our subject matter expert on cybersecurity. Here, briefly, I reported what are the main standard and guidelines that we follow for the cybersecurity. And I remember that uh, um, the cybersecurity process start identifying the asset that we want to protect. What are the available interface, also called the attack surface? What are the possible threats for this surface? 
This allows the creation of a threat modeling system that is structured like an FMEA, and it is a starting point um, for our analysis, evaluation, and risk control measure identification. Last points about um, uh, best practices forced by the standard are the software configuration management and the software problem resolution. Software configuration management uh, had the requirement that guarantee code and document data integrity, a robust versioning system that the full traceability is present from requirement to test, and it also forced to have a tracking system for all the software changes. The software problem resolution uh, establish a traceable and formal issue reporting system, so bugs, that the record must be maintained and the relevant party informed, also to evaluate the, the bug trend. So far, we talked about uh, we have talked about the um, uh, best practices, but if you remember, it's important also to continue monitoring their effectiveness. So here I reported some example of the KPI we, we follow, we, uh, we look during the project execution. At product level, the firmware size and complexity represent a good indicator uh, for bug prediction and also test effort, especially for the unit test. Ensure and monitor product requirement and test coverage is the best way to demonstrate reliability. And thanks to a good traceability system, it's possible to minimize the impact of regression in case of changes. The bug trend allow to understand when the firmware is approaching to a failure-free execution, at, at least under repeatable test condition. The software project manager handled the typical um, project KPI in order to ensure predictable execution. Just to mention that for the software, the uh, project risk and change management are the two typical critical area. Finally, based on the assumption that uh, good organization results in better products when the right processes are in place, our quality team ensure process compliance adherence. But processes are executed by people, and it's important to have the right expertise and strategy in place. We, we applied um, a complete team segregation between developer, test, and quality in order to ensure independence and specialization. Such specialization is visible also at project level. The software project manager that we saw in the previous slide um, ensure plan execution and the right coordination between all the project team members. The firmware architect is the main responsible for the design and its correct implementation collaborating with the developers. The unit test team operate at the white box level, targeting branching and multi-conditional test coverage. System test team operate mainly at the black box level, covering most of the uh, manual and semi-automatic tests we have seen before. And the quality team as a um, a fully dedicated and specialized team for the software, the software QA. Whenever possible, such a, um, specialization lead to official certification. Anyway, we can rely on appointed subject matter experts that support our team and uh, engineer during the project execution. Several standards and software methodology promote continuous improvement and for sure such, uh, such promotion support the reliability. 
In Flex, we have in place uh, an effective uh, uh, knowledge sharing mechanism to deploy such improvement. <clears throat> Lessons learned are performed periodically and uh, promoted with classroom section and available on common database. Each employee as a um, each new employee has a complete onboarding program and training target that has to achieve, have to achieve every year. Such trainings cover technical and soft skill area. Finally, guideline and work instruction supports our engineer on a daily basis. Here I reported some examples. I hope that this fast journey around the firmware in medical will leave a mark in your memory. Usually an example helps a lot in such, sample, in such sense. This simple drug inhaler has mainly two functionality, dose counting and BLE connectivity. And we developed according to the class B of the software safety classification. Firmware can be released in a few weeks in a demo environment but it could take time to achieve the reliability expectation we set. Such, a, such expectation is requested by our customer in order to uh, guarantee patient safety and health, and obviously to achieve the compliance. Improvisation is not contemplated in this field. It could take time to build the proper expertise and also several investment. After years that we are successfully operating in such field, we can proudly offer this service to our customer. Thank you very much for the attention and I will leave to Patti. Thanks so much, Francesco, for that in-depth look at high reliability firmware. I see that we do have some questions. I can start at the top. I see that you mentioned Agile in one of the slides. Do you use that methodology? Um, the Agile methodology, you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mentioned here. Um, yes, basically, um, let me split in two areas. At the beginning, I mentioned the mobile medical hub development. In that area, uh, we use a lot such methodology. We use the Scrum. Uh, that is part of the, uh, of the Agile. And it's interesting that when uh, uh, we are working on purely software and uh, with a stable platform and with a customer that uh, uh, has a, an Agile mindset, it's really uh, effective. On the firmware, we are more on the learning curve. Mm, we are starting to move the, the first step it's a, it's a different environment, the platform are uh, in development and so on, but we try to use um, as much as possible uh, the, the main principle of the Agile. All right, the next question is, could you provide more details on the meaning of Class B safety classification? Yeah, I mentioned, yeah. Basically the, um, the 62304 um, consider three different uh, safety classif class for the safety classification, A, B, and C. Um, the a device that has a software classified in, in A, it means that the software cannot uh, create any um, injury to the patient. Class B means that uh, it can create uh, injury, non-serious injury, and class C, that is the more strict, can create a serious injury or even death to the patient. Um, the the 62304 made this uh, um, classification also to uh, tune the development and the test effort. If you, for example, if you have a device with the class A, that is uh, the less restrictive one, you can uh, avoid uh, some of the steps that we saw in the V model. You can skip the unit test, you can also skip uh, some part of the software risk analysis, for example. 
All right, we have one more question. How do you achieve the requirement mentioned in configuration management and problem resolution? Do you use software tools for that? Yeah, just to... Yeah, basically uh, this part that is covered by the, um, by the standard, uh, are basically uh, accomplished thanks to uh, some combination of tool uh, for the software configuration management, I could mention uh, tool based on uh, subversion or, uh, or Git and also requirement management. There is a certain link between uh, the different tool. For the, for the problem resolution, uh, you can rely on tool like uh, Bugzilla or Jira from the Suite Atlassian. There are several tools. We also sometimes uh, use a tool suggested by customer or uh, together with customer. We have a certain degree of flexibility. But obviously, uh, the configuration of such tool is important in order to uh, be compliant with the, um, with the requirement of uh, the 62304. All right, it looks like we don't have any more questions. So I do want to thank all our participants for their time. And thank you, Francesco. You're and welcome. We, we hope that you'll join us next month on April 7th when we talk about advanced simulation which optimizes manufacturing. So until then, have a great evening, have a great day, afternoon, and see you next time. Thank you. Bye.